to the Oluwa son. Please, can you call me, sir? Please. I don't yeah, know what's there. Me? Yeah. Okay. All Please. Right, sir. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Please, where are you joining us from? I'm um, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. yeah. thank you, thank you. So I was enjoying the conversation, you know, uh, on Twitter uh, before I joined you guys here. You know, when you guys were talking about, um, you know, Shore and you know, all, you know, I was listening from when you were talking about religion before you delved into the issue of uh, Shore. Yeah, him going back into to work with Tinubu and everything, and I heard, you know, so many comments that were made. Uh, for, so let me let me uh, first state that I support Shore. Uh, you know, uh, and um, um. I'll start by correcting some things that were said here, you know, um, because I did hear that um, one of the things that was said here um, by someone is that, you know, when Showare wanted, when Peter Obi went to LP, that is when mm -hmm. Showare said, you know, Labour Party is a party of, uh, what did you call it again? Uh, party, party. Party. I had you want to say it. Yes, yes. So, so that is number one. That's factually incorrect. Showare had made that statement, I think, more than two months before Peter Obi even showed interest in joining Labour Party, before it was public knowledge that he, that he would join Labour Party. We need to understand again. No, sorry, to... sorry, 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 yeah. bro, sorry, 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 sorry to about it. No, 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 no. Let me, no, no. Please go and watch that. Uh, that uh, this thing. I watched it that day. It was it like mm -hmm. in, uh, in a salon. What he said, Labour Party is now the one that harbour is that offended that harbour everything. That part, okay. that it, 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 what he just so, that way. Yeah. So if you are not, yeah, able, so, not use Labour Party that day now and use Obi name. Uh, okay. Please. So, so I like, I'm I'm someone who likes to work with facts. You know, one of the one of the mm -hmm. reasons why where we are in Africa, you know, where we are, where we are, is because we don't work with facts, we just work with emotions. Now, mm. I'm giving you a fact that maybe Showare may have said it that day also, but the first time he uttered that statement, that Labour Party is an orphanage home for politicians who have lost their place in PDP and APC, was months, months, and those who follow political news can actually go and get the fact. In fact, I can bring the video. The video is out no, there. He said uh, bro, he said, you are not understanding our point here. Please. You are not understanding my point. Uh, no, maybe you have said it before, but when you use OB, we are talking about OB, that's why we bring him there. Yes, I get you. I get you uh, correctly. And if that is what you're saying, then that is fine. Right. But um, I think, you know, we need to put things in perspective. The reason why he called Labour Party an orphanage home was not because of Obi or any other politician. As a matter of fact, you know, you know, the day he said that was at a particular, you know, trade union um, uh, meeting. You know, I think it was in Abuja you know, where there was the I think the NLC and a couple of other you know trade organizations, unions. Right. And he made that statement that they should be watchful. You know, they should not allow their platform to be used by politicians who will lose out their place in PDP and APC and they just come, you know, deceive them and even come and implement anti-people poli policies on their on, on their platform. So it was not, you know, particular about Obi. And people keep saying this thing that, you know, why is Shore attacking Peter Obi? And it's, 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 uh, when I hear uh, it, bros, bros, please. Yeah. Uh, because you come here, don't, please don't be angry at me targeting because you come and say you want to play no, fast. Yes. And uh, please, let me just interject one second. I uh, just another one. Do you remember when uh, so what they said he is the one i think it was in uh, rice tv during the campaign when they was asking him this question why are you always attacking obi he said ah he, uh, he is the one that give uh falano uh his document of his whole party for to give to obi to use to go to labor party do you aware of that that one i remember that i remember that is that, okay, is that, is that so, no he said by you it's so that said it is not anybody that said it before and okay. again on september i think it was september 20th uh uh 2023 i was there physically in the event the, the person who who the lawyer who did the workings for obi to become a candidate on a labor party was femi falano and she was said it in his front at gani family's memorial the video is all on youtube and he asked people go and verify from femi falano so if you say what is worrying me is jealousy why did i give him my documents why did i give femi falano my documents to be able to you know enable him argue you know in, in favor of obi to become a candidate of the labor party so right. that, that is yeah it's, 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 we, we need to deal with facts and just you know put the emotions aside you know and and, and coming back to people saying oh you know why is shiwore always attacking uh, uh peter obi and everything i mean it's very funny to me oh, because when you look at countries across the world you know even countries where many people like a lot of people on this on this uh, platform say they are in the diaspora or whatever you know how elections are in every part of the world let me let me use the us as as for for example when they have elections you see how political campaigns are run they get you know um you know the, the candidate the, 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 the woes of the other candidates and they come out not, not really woes because it is fact it's fact and they put it as a sponsored ad on television this person did this in 2020 in 2019 he did this he did that he did that don't vote for him he's going to be a disadvantage to our nation this message is proudly sponsored by hillary clinton a campaign organization so why is it that people who claim to be exposed, you know, who claim to be, you know, uh, living across the world, see how elections are done? But when we come back, when we bring that um, 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 uh, election season back to Nigeria, we start seeing people say, no, don't talk about the other candidate, just sell yourself. No, 
you are supposed to talk about the other candidates. And when we come here and we come and say, oh, Peter Obi is not part of the establishment. Which establishment is he not part of? Has he not been a governor in Nigeria before? Can any of you take your child to a public school in the states that he governed? Can any of you go and conduct a heart surgery in the states that he governed? Can any of you, you know, the, 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 the services you enjoy, the public infrastructure you enjoy in other states, can you go and enjoy it in that particular state where he governed for eight whole years? I doubt that any of you, if you have to answer that question genuinely, you'll be able to, you'll say yes. So these are the problems and the issues and the hypocrisy that Nigerians face. And that's why Nigeria is backwards. If you say you have your own preferred guy, you know, you prefer uh, Obi to Tinubu, like somebody was saying, you prefer Obasanjo to Tinubu or whatever he was saying, you know, that's good. That's nice. But don't come out and tell us here that in 2020, we young people of Nigeria did not say, oh, we are tired. You know, no APC, no PDP. We said all of that. We've consistently said that our politicians across board have failed us. But when it's time for elections, when it's time to make that change, you now see what I call the classic Nigerian hypocrisy. Oh, no, don't talk about Tinubu like that. Oh, no, don't talk about Peter Obi like that. Oh, no, why are you mentioning Peter? And someone even said, you know, Shore needs to talk about Peter Obi to get relevance. I mean, that's, that is very laughable at, 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 at finest. And this, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. If Peter Obi, okay, let's look at the current state of Nigeria right now. In the last election, we we're begging Nigerians, let's focus on issues. Let's focus on issues. People were saying, no, what are we talking about? Let's focus on issues. The issue of fuel subsidy removal in this country is what is causing hardship in Nigeria today. How many of these candidates, Atiku said, I will remove it. Um, uh, uh, Peter Obi said, I will remove it. Uh, Tinobu said, I will remove it. Who was the only individual in this country who said, no, we cannot remove this fuel subsidy like this? In a country that wants to industrialize, in a country that wants to grow, and we do not have power supply, where majority of Nigerian businesses are being foiled by this particular product, small scale businesses, medium scale businesses are being, you know, um, uh, are being foiled by these products. We cannot remove fuel subsidy yet. What are the issues that is making us say we want to remove fuel subsidy? The establishment is telling us corruption. Who are the people who are corrupt? We don't know them. They have refused to pub publish their names. Nigeria is the only country in the world where they will tell you that 17 individuals have been found out to be sponsoring Boko Haram, but their names will never drop. Their names will never drop. So this is what we're saying. Um, also, look at the issue of the, um, protecting the borders. They said, oh, they are smuggling our fuel out of the country. Is your issue now to make your, your, your is the solution now to make your citizens suffer or to find ways to improve your border security? I saw a video of you know them smuggling timber. I think it was timber or one of our you know um, stuff out of Cross River states. Up to date, people are still saying they are smuggling food out of the country. So regardless of what you want to you know, uh, uh, if, even if you cut off all subsidies, the, the borders will still be porous. And we raise these issues on more relation. Whether you hate him, whether you love him, it does not change any difference. He's a natural, is a national hero, and he was the only candidate in the last election who focused on policy who was drawing the attention of nigerians saying let us focus on policy let us focus on what you know Sinubu is bringing to the table let them come and debate some people said who is shawara is a small boy someone who has lived in the u.s done fantastic things and i say i've listened to some of this um youtube platform even the one where dr damage is host and some of you will go on that platform and say she already brought worry to power but you forgot that many of us in nigeria were not illiterate we used to watch sahara tv and the same dr damages that you are talking about is the person who was no, watching no, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, speaker. Uh, sorry sorry no no parody. no abuse sorry. good luck to that hello. and hello. all of you will be there all of you will be there saying like, 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 let, let the guy land no 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 we have to we have, we have to put something correct i was i was going to attack him but let him finish please it's, okay, let, let me, let me, I'll, let, I'll allow you to come in. But it is the height okay. of hypocrisy for people to be hosting conversations when we know. I used to, I, I didn't even read Sahara Reporters. I used to watch Dr. Damages every yeah, yeah. week. Uh, Good uh, luck, uh, yeah, yeah, Mr. Speaker. Good luck, Please, please. please. So, so uh, how do we now turn. Okay, please. let me just round up. I'll please, round up. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we now turn into such hypocrites in this country? And that's why Nigeria cannot succeed, because our political discourse is led by hypocrites. It's not led by truth. It's led by fantasies of, you know, uh, 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 emotional sentiment, tribal sentiments and all. How do we now say this individual, Omo Yelisho Ware, brought Buhari to power? I posted a video and that video is on the Internet. If you have data, you can search for that video. That conversation was hosted by Kayode Ogundamisi. And also, J.J. Omodua was a co-guest with Omoye Le Showare in 2014. And Showare, Omoye Le Showare in 2014 was on that interview telling Nigerians that anybody that thinks that when you vote for APC, there's going to be a change. That he, he said two words. That person is inherently naive. Go and verify this and I'm telling you. So how is it this individual that all of you are now demonizing as the person who brought Buhari to power? I think, okay. finally, I'll say this Mr. one last sentence. It's okay, it's okay. You will I'll come say back. this one last sentence. You will right? come back. Okay. You will come back, yes, please. I'll say this one last thing. I'll say this one last thing and I'll keep quiet. You see? I'll say this one last thing and I'll keep quiet. You see, Omo Yele is a nas national hero. 
He has done what many people in the diaspora who are hiding under their beds coming. He came back, left his family, said, I will go to war with the establishment. He did it and he suffered for it. This is the only man that will go on national TV and say, Inabikano must be free at the expense of his whole own life. He will say it unapologetically. He counsels all of the establishment. So my question for you guys on this platform is, why, what special protection? What is the reason why Peter will be a governor? Who could not provide quality, you know, you know, you know, healthcare? And when I mean quality healthcare, I don't mean healthcare for the what they call it, talakawadi, you know, the poverty stricken people. I mean healthcare that you in the diaspora can be proud of. Healthcare that people like Dangote or Tedola can go, you know, and and, and and enjoy and put themselves under that particular politicians. You know, why does he enjoy that special protection? Some of us we witness the governors of Tinubu, and despite the little or not little that they did, we refuse the establishment, we refuse to support them. So why is it that you guys demonize? You enjoy, you, it gives you a lot of ego to come out and castigate the only one amongst all of you in the diaspora who have been there for 15, 20 years, some of you will never return, that put his foot on the ground and said, this establishment, I'm going to fight them head on, I'm coming back to Nigeria. Why do you continue to be hypocrites and, and demonize him and enjoy what you do? Anyways, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Madam President, please let me go first. Thank you very much. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, go ahead. When you finish, I'll uh, go. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. You see, nobody is demonizing so worried. We have to put that fast. Number two, what I want to say, why I wanted to interject, when they are saying so, we already brought uh, Buari to power. Nobody is exempting uh, Dr. Damage. Nobody is exempting Adeola out of it. At least we have to get it. Even me, I've, if, if, I can't even say, more than three times I've seen people in Dr. Damage, even me, I've said it. You are the one that brought uh, Buari. Dr. Damage will never answer. If it's dear, if it's listening to us, you should come out, deny it. You will never answer, but you know, you don't want to dive into that conversation. But why people say so, we already brought uh, Buari because we use the Sahara reporter to look at it. If Arise is saying something now, we will say Arise. You cannot not be saying that at your salami or those, you know, you have to say Arise. That is the way everybody is going, going into. Not that everybody is saying it's only so we are not just saying it's only so we're going to go under We know what the Tanabe did. We know what the Allah did. We know that is where we know them before we even know, we even know so we're physical. I know so we're physical in a, a 2019 election. You understand? Know, but I know the Sarah reporter, uh, Dr. Jamie, I'll be following him all this, even the time of uh, all this, uh, what they uh, about uh, Jonathan, they said, that is what, what, what make all of us to go and buy Buhari. That is why people are not saying, ah, it's so worried. You are the one that brought Buhari to the, not that on a bad way, because we know that Dr. Damage is part of the other, but all of them, they are part of it. Because we saw all of them there in the, in the, in the paper. You understand? Know, so nobody is demonizing so worried. Only what I accept, and I'm happy you said, people are taking Obi like a god. Not everybody. You have to still know that. Not everybody. Me, I voted for me, but when the game become to look what is, I have no, I, I don't know what people say your opinion. I only tell you, no, no, I'm not part of that one because I don't insult people online. I don't bully people online. I always want to give me facts. If I say something, come back with a superior argument. That's what I respect you. If you are not trying to be making, blah, 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 I will give it back to you because me, I have my mouth. Please, nobody is uh, demonizing. Uh, so we're here. Please. Thank you very much. Wait, Um. excuse me. Hello? Can I hello. come in? Yeah, please wait one minute. Uh, my is here. Who is that? Who wants to call? Is it the uh... Niger man? Um, yeah. uh, it's me. Black experience. Uh, black experience. Ah, I agree too. I, I agree with you guys too. Hi, Baba. Yo, this new guy that came in. I mean, I keep hearing about Shawere every day, every day. I'm like, what has Shawere done? Uh, uh, black experience. Wait one minute. Let uh, this man join. Target. Then you can't have your sure, friend. sure. Okay, okay. All right. Just one minute. Uh, my is coming. Thank uh, you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> the speaker that just spoke. I don't know his name, so I don't want to. I don't want to pronounce wrong name. But anyway, we're spoken. You have spoken, you know, very well as a partisan politi partisan politics, you know, which you narrated. I mean, there's nothing wrong about it. You represented your principle where the way you narrated and everything yeah, about him. But um <clears throat> my question to you, to be honest, it's gonna be two questions. Maybe you could take them one at a time. I mean, I'm not here to poke a hole in your narrative about you know what you said about Sovere and Obi and all that kind of thing. So I have one question to you is that People are talking about, maybe not me, but general, I'm making a general statement. People are saying, why is your principal, you know, spend most of his time, 80%. I know he condemned the, you know, he condemned the, uh, the, ruling, go the ruling government, but he spent about 80% of his time criticizing Obi. So there's a, there's a certain kind of narrative, you know, th that people are painting in that way. Would you blame people for the way they are, you know, if people have to narrate it that way that he's, you know, he's spending most of his time criticizing Obi. And my second question is that, um, how do you see, um, still worry? Because Shewari has not, you know, had any any political office in Nigeria. Do you think his activism is the way to go in order to actualize his, you know, dream or whatever, you know, to save Nigeria to become a president? Do you think he's following the right path? So that's the two questions I want you to answer whenever you have time. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. Please, uh, can you come in? Uh, I don't know. What's the name, please? Hello, can I, I, can I respond? Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, respond. Yeah. yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much um, for that question. And that's not to sound like Peter will be. Uh, but I like to borrow that sometimes. Anyways, you know, back to the major um, question you asked. <laughs> <laughs> you said uh, that, uh, um, first off, you know, it's uh, why does Shiwara spend majority of his time attacking Peter Obi? Again, I will say what I said at the beginning, that I like facts and not emotional, you know, like I like us to dwell on facts. So this allegation, you know, was brought up during the election that, you know, Shiwara spends majority of his time. And as an advent for uh, Shiwara supporter, I went to his Twitter handle. I searched for Tinubu, I searched for Atiku, I searched for Peter Obi. At that particular time, and this was deep into the election, almost six months, uh, maybe like three more, three more months before the actual polls, this man has mentioned more times Tinubu than Peter Obi. But the issue is that you guys who support Peter Obi, you have a bias to him. So whenever you hear Peter Obi, you go mad. But he mentions Tinubu all the time. He mentions Atiku all the time. The very report, the, the, the major point of your campaign in the last election, like your counter, you know, or like only counter attack towards the APC guys, was that Tinubu, was a, Tinubu is a drug dealer. Who is the hero? Who is the Nigerian hero that brought out that fact? In 20, I think it was 2010 or 2011, the person who did that report, what David who then carried, copied, you know, paraphrased and, and unleashed for you guys again, was Omoyele Showare. What is happening in this country? Like, what, what is this bias? So, if Showare was the one who got those documents that exposed Tinubu and published this report first, how can you then say that Showare is focusing more on Peter Obi than Tinubu? So, this Showare has been the headache of every single politician that has rendered Nigerians, you know, um, the way that they are right now, you know, via his platform. And, and just to make a correction, I don't agree that Dr. Damages and the rest brought Buhari to power. If they were exposing good luck, Jonathan, it's not their fault that it was not a better candidate to capitalize on that and, and bring a change in Nigeria. It is not their fault. I'm yet to see one Sahara reporter's article, one statement from Adeola Fayehu, one statement from Dr. Damages, uh, which is my favorite, one statement from Omo Who's that when they said, you know, go and vote Buhari, but I can produce you articles on Sahara reporters. One in Nigeria. No, no, I'm mistaken. No, 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 that, no, that's not what we are saying. That's not what we are saying. Sorry to put it. it no, we are saying the way that we are exposing to Jonathan. That is what made us to bad worry. That is what we are saying. Not that they're saying we should work for Jonathan. I don't understand why in Nigeria we have to criminalize doing good. If somebody exposed Jonathan for some things that he did, right, when he was in office, how is it how is it that we are going to prosecute those people and leave the people that they're actually talking about? Was there no corruption in the Jonathan administration? And if you look at the trajectory of Nigeria, Nigeria has been on a steady declining slope. In fact, some Nigerians will even argue with you that the military was even better than Obas and just first democratic tenor, uh, Yaradwa's time, and coming down to good luck, and coming down to where we are right now. So Nigeria has been on a steady declining slope. It is not Omo Elisho Wore, Sahara reporters, Adeo Lafayette, who's fault. And just to answer the first question correctly, it is factually incorrect that Shore spends more, much of his time attacking Peter, uh, Peter Obi. Let me give you an example. I, personally, as a Shore supporter, we went out on the streets last week. I don't know if you saw the news. We went to protest against the hunger in the land. We are the only movement that has protested against Tinubu. We are the only movement in the history of Nigeria that faced um, um, Buhari's administration. You know, square on. We faced it and Omo Elisho Wore, he, he paid the price for it. He paid the price. He paid please, four years. please, gentlemen, oh we're, we're, we're not here to sell show. We're, we're here to, to no, 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 no. You're, when you were demonizing you're him, him, you're, you're selling him too much. Wait a minute. You know please, you're, 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 you're letting the guy finish. He's the, he's the new voice. The let, let, give him space. The topic, thank you very much. Thank you for protecting me. The topic is about Shore. So if we're talking about Shore, you don't want me to sell. I'm not no, the to topic sell. is to, the topic is Shore. Yeah, you're right. The yes, topic is Shore. Topic is so if you don't want to sell him, you, you want to spend all the time demonizing him. But when there's a voice for him, you want, you know, unfair hearing. That's not the kind of democracy we want to. No, carry on, carry on, carry on. Uh, yeah, thank, you, uh, thank you very uh, much. Black 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 so, black. so as I was saying, we went out on the streets. I was there. I risked my life. I was there in Lagos. I went out on the street despite the threats, despite the uh, intimidation. In fact, one of our organizers, the head of Take Back Movement in Nigeria, was kidnapped by the police and the DSS a day to the protest. In that very protest, they brought out a counter-terrorism police to come and face us. So what are we talking about? Which other movement in the history of this country from 2018, 2019, uh, 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 um, and up to the date that we are, that have come out on the street, put their life on the line? Who did Buhari must go? Omo Eleshoware. Who shows up to every Inner Dekano hearing? Omo Eleshoware. Who is the person that, you know, did not his bidding protest? Let it. Omo Eleshoware. Who is the only presidential candidate in the history of this country to put his leg on ground during answers from day one to the, day, to the end? Omo Eleshoware. So it uh, is... Uh, listen, politics. Campaign is over, brother, man. Do you, do you have a over. problem with me speaking in favor of Shore? Wait, nah. No, but you do it too much. Like, we are allowing you so many times to rant no. about a guy. No, 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 no. no. Wait, wait. Uh, Black Nation. Uh, he has not made any Black change. Black Nation. Black Nation. Black Nation. Please. You, no, you, you have your time. Let me finish. You have your time, please. Because the topic was, is Shore going back to APC? That was the topic. If you want to look at you, you understand? So we are talking about Shore in that voting. 
He said this is a supporter. So you want to clarify things. If you are going wrong, please don't let him finish. Let him have his own time. And, and, and my question is two parts. So we still have one more to answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, after, 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 after him, that is a uh, black list. Yes. Please. Please, I have I, I understand why the other speaker may be angry, you know. Uh, it's not it's not new to me, you know, but my job is to speak the truth, you know. Uh in the likes of Nelson Mandela. Yeah, let's let, let challenge, let challenge the issue, let leave the person. Yeah, no, I, I will challenge the issue, but when someone is upset that I'm I don't know what I, I, I didn't even tackle any other candidate, I'm just telling you what uh, Sharon has done. We can't tell you when it is done, we can't tell you when it's just moving. Exactly, on. exactly. So uh going ahead to the second question. So I, I just wanted to make that clear that it's factually incorrect to say, Oh, she is only attacking one person. The only person that has put foot on ground and has given his life to tackle this APC government the way they should be tackled. And the only way you can tackle them is not by talking on social media, it's by ra radically putting your leg on ground the same way legs were put on ground in 2012 to carry Jonathan's casket. We have to, you know, be radical in our approach if we're going to save this country. And that leads me to the second question that he asked, where he said the way Shore is going about this thing in, a, in an activist approach. I mean, like, again, let's go back to facts. Who are the greatest leaders that have ever led on the continent of Africa? They all have a background in activism. You, they, 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 in the words of um, Dele Faro to me, who supported uh, uh, Peter Bin last election, he said, you know, in Shore's defense, where people, he said the, act, the politician who is not an activist is a thief. Facts. Go and Google. I, I didn't say that, you know, from my mouth. So you look at the situation in Senegal recently. This is the president, the 44 year old who was elected in Senegal. And you look at the way that they challenged that guy who wanted to tr uh, truncate the democracy there, who wanted to give himself a tall tenor. They went out on the streets. They were radical in their approach. In fact, the guy who is president today just came out of prison three weeks ago. Oh, three weeks before he was declared a you know, president. So, and they were able to take that country back from that guy. So when you say uh, the activist approach, the way uh, Shiwara is doing, is that the way to go about it? All the other guys who are not activists, who are, who are politicians, what have they produced? The people in the National Assembly who are telling in us today, which comprise of PDP, Labour Party, and other political parties, who are telling us that when Nigerians are suffering, you understand, you should go and buy Tinubu a private, a private jet. Is that the kind of governance you want? But when we have people who are ready to give their, li their life, to challenge this issue because you can never solve Nigeria's problem radically. Ghani Fami said it, Fela Kuti said it, a lot of our greats, they all said this. You can never solve Nigeria's problem by all this mere, uh, I pass my neighbor politics, I meet Obas and today, I bow down for Ivy tomorrow. You can never solve Nigeria's problem by that. So that is the way he's going about it, is the right way if you truly want change. Thank you.